Hello, and welcome to the 10th episode of LGBTQIA+, Heroes, Icons, Legends, and Events. This series of programs covers a wide variety of topics, such as activist Marsha P. Johnson, entertainers Dolly Parton, Freddie Mercury, and Cher, and politician and activist Harvey Milk. Today we'll talk about the LGBTQIA+, Legends of Literature. Let's start with Oscar Wilde. The Irish poet and playwright was born October 16, 1854, in Dublin, Ireland. He attended Trinity College in Dublin, where he started writing poetry. He also attended Oxford University, where he had a reputation for eccentricity with his long hair, flamboyant clothing, and room decorations of peacock feathers and flowers. He was a spokesman for the late 19th century aesthetic movement in Britain, which championed art for art's sake. In 1881, he published his first book of poetry, appropriately titled Poems. It sold out its first printing of 750 copies, but was criticized for its content. One critic said, the poet is wild, but his poetry's tame. Oscar married Constance Lloyd in 1881, and they had two sons. He began having affairs with men and teenage boys after the birth of their second child. He worked as a journalist, magazine editor, and essayist from 1886 to 1891. He wrote his first novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray, in 1891. He started writing plays in the late 1880s. He wrote Lady Windermere's Fan, A Woman of No Importance, and An Ideal Husband between 1891 and 1894. His most famous play, The Importance of Being Earnest, was written in 1894. Oscar was accused of homosexual behavior in 1895 and was arrested for gross indecency. He was imprisoned from May 1895 to May 1897, and he spent his last years in exile and poverty in France. He died on November 30, 1900. On February 14, 1995, he was honored with a stained glass window at Poets Corner in Westminster Abbey. He was pardoned posthumously in 2017, along with approximately 50,000 other British men, by the law informally known as the Alan Turing Law. One of his most famous quotes is, Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Now let's talk about American poet, essayist, and journalist Walt Whitman. He was born on May 31, 1819, on Long Island, New York. He left school at age 11 to work as a printer's apprentice. He also worked as a teacher at age 19. He moved to Manhattan and worked for several newspapers. Walt became a devoted fan of Italian opera. He later said that he could not have written his most famous work, Leaves of Grass, without the influence of opera. He started working on Leaves of Grass in 1850 and he paid for the first printing himself. The book featured the famous poems, Song of Myself, and O Captain, My Captain, an ode to President Abraham Lincoln. Walt revised Leaves of Grass many times during his life, adding poems and taking others out. The 1881 version, which is considered the best edition, contained 293 poems. Leaves of Grass was criticized for being obscene and overtly sexual. Walt's sexual orientation is generally assumed as homosexual or bisexual based on his poetry, which depicts sexuality and love in a more earthy way common at the time. Walt Whitman died on March 26, 1892. Over 1,000 people attended his funeral. He was named the first poet of democracy for his ability to write in a strikingly American voice. He is definitely one of the most influential American poets. One of his most famous quotes is, Keep your face always toward the sunshine, and shadows will fall behind you. Now we'll talk about British novelist Virginia Woolf, one of the most important modernist authors and one of the first to use stream of consciousness narratives. She was born on January 25, 1882 in London, England, into an affluent family. From 1897 to 1901, Virginia attended the Ladies' Department of King's College in London, where she studied the classics and history. She also met the early reformers of women's education and the women's rights movement. She began writing professionally in 1900 and helped establish the Bloomsbury Group, an artistic literary group of writers. In 1912, she married Leonard Wolfe, and in 1917, they established the Hogarth Press, which published most of her work. She also had romantic relationships with other women, which inspired her literature. 
Virginia suffered several mental breakdowns and was institutionalized several times. She attempted suicide at least twice. She died of suicide in 1941. Her best known works are Mrs. Dalloway, Orlando, and To the Lighthouse. Virginia Woolf was a pioneer in the early 20th century feminist movement, and through her work as a journalist and novelist, she became a feminist icon. She has been commemorated by statues and literary societies dedicated to her work. One of her most famous quotes, a feminist is any woman who tells the truth about her life. American playwright and screenwriter Tennessee Williams is considered, along with his contemporaries Arthur Miller and Eugene O'Neill, to be one of the three foremost playwrights of 20th century drama. Born Thomas Lanier Williams III on March 26, 1911 in Columbus, Mississippi, he took the name Tennessee, a nickname he'd been given in college because of his southern drawl. In the late 1930s, after several failed attempts at relationships with women, he began exploring homosexual relationships. At age 33, he suddenly became famous with his play, The Glass Menagerie, which reflected his unhappy upbringing. His other successful plays include A Streetcar Named Desire in 1947, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof in 1955, Sweet Bird of Youth in 1959, and The Night of the Iguana in 1961. All of these plays were adapted into very successful films. He also wrote short stories, poetry, essays, and his memoirs. He moved to Key West, Florida in 1949 and lived there off and on until his death. In the 1960s, his work began to suffer due to his increased dependence on alcohol and prescription drugs. As he grew older, he felt increasingly alone and depressed. He was inducted into the American Theater Hall of Fame in 1979. The Tennessee Williams Theater in Key West, Florida is named for him. On February 25, 1983, he died of an overdose of sleeping pills, which he had taken for years to combat his insomnia. In the years since his death, he has been recognized for his contributions. The Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival has been held since 1986. The post office issued a commemorative stamp with his portrait in 1995. And in 2009, he was inducted into the Poet's Corner at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City. One of his most famous quotes is, Why did I write? Because I found life unsatisfactory. American novelist, playwright, poet, and activist James Baldwin was born in Harlem in New York City on August 2, 1924. His mother married a Baptist preacher who treated James harshly. James's intelligence and persecution at home led him to spend much of his time in libraries. He discovered his passion for writing as a teenager. After high school, he worked odd jobs and wrote short stories and essays. He moved to Paris at age 24 and became involved in the cultural radicalism of the left bank. He also began to publish in literary anthologies. In 1953, his first novel, Go Tell It on the Mountain, was published. He had begun writing it at age 17 and published it in Paris. His second novel, Giovanni's Room, created controversy when it was published in 1956 due to explicit sexual content and the fact that it dealt primarily with white characters. His third and fourth novels, Another Country and Tell Me How Long the Train's Been Gone, included black and white characters as well as gay and bisexual characters. He returned to the United States in 1957 to join the Civil Rights Movement. He made a prominent appearance at the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom with friends Sidney Poitier and Marlon Brando. However, his sexuality conflicted with his activism. Since the Civil Rights Movement did not tolerate homosexuals, he was excluded from the inner circle of the civil rights activists. He continued to be an activist and participated in the march from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery. James Baldwin died on December 1, 1987. In 2005, the United States Postal Service issued a first-class stamp in his honor. One of his most famous quotes, I've always believed you can think positive just as well as you can think negative. Born on September 30, 1924, Truman Capote was an American novelist, screenwriter, playwright, actor, and celebrity. His short stories, novels, and plays are considered to be literary classics. Most famous are his novella, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and his true crime novel, In Cold Blood. Both were made into successful films. He was best friends with To Kill a Mockingbird author Harper Lee until they both became famous. Truman never attended college. 
Truman was openly gay. He spent the majority of his life partnered with Jack Dunphy, a fellow writer. He was well known for his distinctive voice, odd mannerisms, and flamboyant manner of dress. Truman never fully embraced the gay rights movement, but his openness and encouragement for others to be open about their homosexuality made him a strong advocate for LGBT people. After In Cold Blood, he became a sought-after celebrity, frequently appearing on talk shows. In 1966, he organized the Black and White Ball at New York's Plaza Hotel. It was considered the social event of the season. He never finished another novel. Truman had become addicted to alcohol and drugs and was frequently in rehab in the 1970s. He became a recluse in the 1980s. He died in Los Angeles, California on August 25, 1984. He was portrayed by actor Robert Morse in the award-winning Broadway one-man show, True, and also by actor Philip Seymour Hoffman in the award-winning biopic film, Capote. One of his most famous quotes is, Failure is the condiment that gives success its flavor. African-American playwright and writer Lorraine Hansberry was born on May 19, 1930. Her family lived in the Washington Park subdivision in Chicago and had frequent high-profile African-American visitors including poet Langston Hughes, musician Duke Ellington, and Olympic gold medalist Jesse Owens. Lorraine attended the University of Wisconsin at Madison and became politically active in the Communist Party USA. In 1950, she left Madison to pursue a writing career in New York City. She also became involved in the U.S. Civil Rights Movement. In 1953, she married her close friend, Robert Nemiroff, a Jewish songwriter and political activist. However, she was a closeted lesbian and she separated from Nemiroff in 1957. Lorraine became the first African-American female author to have a play performed on Broadway in New York City when A Raisin in the Sun opened at the Ethel Barrymore Theater on March 11, 1959. She was also the youngest American playwright and only the fifth woman to receive the New York Drama Critics Circle Award for Best Play. Over the next two years, A Raisin in the Sun was translated into 35 languages and was performed all over the world. Lorraine died on January 12, 1965. In 1999, she was posthumously inducted into the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame, and in 2013, she was inducted into the American Theater Hall of Fame. One of her most famous quotes is, never be afraid to sit a while and think. Now let's talk about Alice Walker. Born on February 9, 1944, Alice Walker is an African-American novelist, short story writer, poet, and activist. She was born the youngest of eight children and was enrolled in school when she was just four years old. When she was eight years old, she suffered an injury to her right eye. Her injury was not treated at the time and she became permanently blind in that eye. She was valedictorian in high school and then received a full scholarship at Spelman College for having the highest achievements in her class. She accepted another scholarship at Sarah Lawrence College in New York City and graduated in 1965. She became a civil rights activist in the early 1960s and participated in the March on Washington. She married lawyer Melvin Leventhal in 1967. They divorced in 1976. She has had relationships with both men and women since her divorce. She published her first novel, The Third Life of Grange Copeland, in 1970. In 1973, she became editor of Ms. Magazine. She then published her second novel, Meridian, in 1976. She is best known for her novel, The Color Purple, published in 1982. It was later adapted into an award-winning film directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Oprah Winfrey and Whoopi Goldberg. She won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction and the National Book Award for Fiction in 1983 for The Color Purple. One of her most famous quotes is, The most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. Finally, let's talk about David Sedaris. He's an American humorist, author, and radio and TV personality. David was born in Johnson City, New York on December 26, 1956. When David was young, his family moved to Raleigh, North Carolina. He briefly attended Western Carolina University before he transferred to Kent State University in Ohio. He moved to Chicago in 1983 and graduated from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in 1987. He was discovered by radio host Ira Glass, and in 1992, David
debuted on National Public Radio with his essay, The Santa Land Diaries. It's a humorous story about his stint as a Christmas elf at Macy's department store. Most of his humor is autobiographical and concerns his family life and middle-class upbringing, his Greek heritage, his homosexuality, and his life in France, London, and West Sussex, England. He has since published 11 books, including two volumes of diaries that he has kept since 1977. David is a popular guest on late-night TV talk shows, and he travels extensively on his book tours. He's famous with his readers for the hours he spends signing books after giving a talk and for the hilarious comments for each individual that he greets at book signings. He lives in West Sussex, England with his longtime partner Hugh Hamrick, a painter and set designer. One of his most famous quotes is, if you read someone else's diary, you get what you deserve. And one last note, James Baldwin, Oscar Wilde, Tennessee Williams, and Virginia Woolf are all honored on the Rainbow Honor Walk in San Francisco's Castro neighborhood. The Rainbow Honor Walk features bronze sidewalk plaques to honor LGBTQIA individuals who have made significant contributions to society through their various achievements. To know more about these amazing authors and their works, go to our website, GwinnettPL.org, and check out the following suggested items. For Oscar Wilde, The Importance of Being Earnest and Other Plays, The Picture of Dorian Gray, Oscar Wilde, Short Stories, For Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass, Poems, and Walt Whitman, Selected Poems, For Virginia Woolf, Mrs. Dalloway, Orlando, and To the Lighthouse. For Tennessee Williams, Plays, 1937 to 1955, Plays, 1957 to 1980, and The Traveling Companion and Other Plays. For James Baldwin, Collected Essays, Giovanni's Room, and Go Tell It on the Mountain. For Truman Capote, In Cold Blood, Breakfast at Tiffany's and Three Stories, and the complete stories of Truman Capote. For Lorraine Hansberry, A Raisin in the Sun, A Raisin in the Sun, the unfilmed original screenplay, and The Great Migration North, 1910 to 1970, which contains a detailed biography of Lorraine Hansberry. For Alice Walker, The Color Purple, In Love and Trouble, and The Way Forward is with a Broken Heart. For David Sedaris, the best of me. Theft by Finding, Diaries 1977 to 2002, and his latest, A Carnival of Snackery, Diaries 2003 to 2020. Also, don't forget to visit our website's digital resources to discover Canopy, our new streaming service. Canopy has a wide selection of films and documentaries about LGBTQIA topics. Thank you for watching.